Hey, welcome to Cloud and Sec. In this video, I want to talk about a capability that is new to the Azure cloud, new to the last in the last few months, but it adds a lot of value to vulnerability management programs for large enterprise organizations. This capability is called Defender External Attack Surface Management, EASM. We're going to have a look at what it is, what it can achieve, and how you can consume some of its information right from the Azure dashboard. Let's dive in. So before we just jump into the platform and the dashboard, let's have a look at the background and where the solution comes from. So a couple years back, Microsoft acquired a company called the Risk IQ. That was a company that has a lot of solutions for threat intelligence and mapping out uh, the, the internet essentially. Out of that acquisition, Microsoft embedded different solutions into the security platform. Now, in this blog post from August 2nd, 2022, so a few months back, we can see here that these solutions uh, have been released as Defender Threat Intelligence being one of them. So that is a tool for SOC teams and threat hunters to investigate what the Microsoft Threat Intelligence knows about artifacts, IOCs, but also threat actors. It's a very powerful tool that is very useful for mature SOC environments. But at the same time, it also announced Defender uh, External Attack Surface Management, which is, as you can see here, it gives security teams the ability to discover unknown and unmanaged resources that are visible and accessible from the internet essentially the same view as an attacker when selecting a target. So when we think of vulnerability management processes, it is very common for us to focus on what's internal, for uh, internal teams to focus on deploying agents that are assessing vulnerabilities on their endpoints and servers. But when we think from an externally facing perspective, from an attacker's perspective, the first thing that they're gonna try and uh, get a visibility of in your environment is most likely what is publicly available to them. So the least effort for them is to uh, potentially scan your environment, scan your domain, scan potentially servers that you have put up on your multi-cloud environment for potential vulnerabilities and potential easy points for them to get into your networks by exploiting a known vulnerability that hasn't yet been patched. So this is where understanding your externally facing attack surface is critical for organizations to hinder and block this initial uh, first attempt from attackers to get a foothold into their organizations and their environment. So this is essentially in a nutshell what Defender External Attack Surface Management comes to do, right? So both of these solutions come from that acquisition of Risk IQ. And, and now we have these two different solutions uh, part of the portfolio for Microsoft security here. When I jump into the Microsoft Learn documentation, I can have a, a look at everything that's available in the platform currently. I can even have a look at uh, pricing information and so on and so forth. For the sake of this video, I'm going to focus on the dashboard itself and the platform and the access of the platform itself. Right. So how do you access external attack surface management? First things first, you do it through the Azure portal. So right now I'm, now I'm logged into my uh, Azure uh, account. I have access to a pay-as-you-go subscription. That's all good and well. When you look for a service called EASM, you're going to find here Defender Microsoft Defender EASM. This is what I'm talking about. As soon as you click on it, you are given the option to create a new inventory or create a new domain that you are scoping out and finding externally facing vulnerabilities for it. When uh, when I say finding out, the, the Risk IQ technologies and database that looks after uh, vulnerabilities throughout the internet, crawls the web constantly and reports it all back to the, its database. And when we create a scope for external attack service for EASM to report to us, we're essentially uh, telling it to look for particular domains, host names, IP addresses, IP address ranges, 
that, sh that we want to have a look at for potentially externally facing vulnerabilities. It does so in different ways. We can check how that is done soon. Okay, so once you do that, first thing you're gonna have to do is set up the discovery. So on the left hand side, I have the menu under the management section, I have the discovery piece. Under discovery, you can see here that I have two discovery groups in this example of mine. Discovery groups work by you providing a seed for it to go out there and fetch its database and fetch the web for known artifacts related to that seed that you provided, right? So when we when I think of a seed, it actually means something that is, is going to be planted and it's gonna grow, right? So at the same time, when we think of growing out of a seed, it's important to understand the concept that um, EASM is actually gonna find relative and related artifacts, related domains, related IP addresses to the seed that you provided. So you don't have to pinpoint every single known artifact and externally attack, externally facing domain and IP address of your organization. By using the, the uh, artifacts and related uh, correlating information on the back end of the database that it, that it has, it is actually able to provide, provide to us uh, recommendations for potentially uh, hosts and IP addresses that are related to our infrastructure that we provided as a seed. So it's quite smart from that perspective. When I'm creating and add adding a discovery group, I have to state a name for this particular discovery group, a potential discovery, but also I set up uh, the recurring frequency for when uh, this should be refreshed as, in, as my infrastructure. Right, so when new related artifacts should be added to this discovery group from, uh, from when I set up. When I click on next and seeds, I can enter the different information that it can find and correlate information for me. As you can see here, I can provide organization names for add asset discovery on the web. I can also provide domains, right? And that's the most, most straightforward way to start uh, assessing for infrastructure, right? So set up a domain that is attributed to your organization, for example, or even an external organization that you want to assess, because this is all public information anyway. Now, of course, uh, when you're setting it up the first time, there's a trial uh, period that you're gonna, you're gonna use it for, for 30 days. Beyond that period, you start getting billed for uh, the consumption of the service, naturally. But what kind of seeds can you provide? So domains is the most common one. So if I wanted to, I could add here one of my domains, for example, cloudinsect.com. Um, I could also enter IP blocks that I want to discover as part of the discovery group, hosts, host names, such as, or entire hosts, such as office.com, email contacts, part of the who is information from domains quite powerful if you think about it, right? So you're finding out if someone has registered an email as the owner of a domain using their corporate email, for example. ASNs and even who is organizations. When you're satisfied with the seeds you provided, you can go ahead and create and run. I'm going to refrain from doing so because I've already done it a few uh, a few weeks ago, as you can see here, a few months ago. When I click on this discovery group that I had set up before, you can see the editing options that I get after I created something, right? So I can force a run now option. So if you set up that recurring frequency to never, you can manually run uh, another um, discovery if you want to, or if you've done so a weekly, it will do it weekly, but you can also prompt it uh, manually, naturally. You can also add it a little of the discovery group. And then it's gonna tell us how many new um, assets have been added as part of each weekly or how frequent you wanna do uh, your discovery discoveries throughout so many, so many times. Once it has discovered uh, information, it's gonna populate your inventory. 
that's the next step for you to start consuming this application. So under inventory, we can see here how many assets uh, have been discovered using the seeds that I provided. I provided a couple of seeds, so it's, it discovers different uh, information for me. So a lot of different domains, a lot of IP addresses related to this uh, discovery groups that I provided and so on and so forth. It tells me more information as I scroll to the right hand side, including initial URLs that are related to that particular uh, artifact that it's found, right? Even admin emails, if there are domains that are that were found as well. So all public information again, right? So when you look at each of these assets uh, you, and you select each of these assets, you can see here that each of them has an estate approved or or differently. So you can modif modify the state of each discovered artifact based on the relevance to your organization or not. Because the seed is going to provide some, uh, some results that are potentially not related to your organization, but it comes down to you to then come in here and modify the assets that are not relevant and actually change them to potentially candidate, which in the case that you're verifying if that's uh, something related to you, maybe that's a dependency, maybe it's minor only. And so that keeps your inventory in check versus uh, what you are monitoring your environment. Now, validating your assets and their state is important because it goes back to billable assets. Right, so when you, once you discover your environment, you set up the environment properly with the relevant assets from your organizations, and they're all approved. Everything that is approved falls under billable assets. And under the billable assets tab, this is where we can see some information about what was found. Once it populates, it's gonna essentially tell you a report on how many billable assets are approved in your environment based on your own inventory choices there. And of course, the seeds that you provided. Uh, but essentially, whatever you approve under inventory is potentially billable. And as you can see here, this might change over time and it provides us with a report uh, for billable assets based on their different types. So I can see most of them are IP pairs for me, uh, not many IP addresses, but as you can see, this is how you can check how many billable resources or assets you have in your environment. Cool. So once you've provided your seeds, once you check the inventory, it's all relevant information, it's time to start uh, looking at the attack surface, what's really the security information provided by the platform. Hopefully you found this initial video about Defender External Attack Surface Management useful. It's been just a quick look at uh, it, its history and also how to get started with it within the portal and the Azure portal. Watch out for follow-up videos on how to you utilize the security capabilities of the platform and even including the integrations that it can provide with your SIEM, for example, which are very useful for specific use cases. See you soon.